and I like just like crumpled to the ground and I like started sobbing. Probably people are like, I, that's horrible because you were so close. Like, yes. if you would have just like paid a little <laughs> bit, I just like panicked. I was like, oh shoot, Guilty. we're sucked in like all the other girls. Guilty. <laughs> I don't know if I would do this again, but this is a fun experience. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I was like, I really hope we didn't just like waste our money. Communicate. That's key. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sister Sip. As you can tell, I am a little bit, you know, not feeling my, you know, top notch self, but just a little horse throat. So we'll see if we can get through this. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and get right into it. We'll start off with our drink here. I made this. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of these. Maybe you haven't before. I think they're called Adrenaline. Adrenal, adrenal mocktails. They're just kind of um, a drink that supports your adrenal glands, and I'm not super scientific I was say. and know all the reasons, but they have a lot of good vitamins and minerals if you put um, the right stuff in them. So hopefully, it's kind of good for to like build my immune system, get me get me back on track. So this has orange juice and coconut water and a little bit of. Um, sea salt and then it has some cream on top so I might repost I'll probably repost on our story a recipe there's a lot of recipes online a recipe that shows what like every single thing is for and like what it supports yeah that would be um, super interesting yeah they're kind of, it's kind of interesting but anyway they're really a fun delicious drink so yeah. <laughs> well let's see I'm excited to try I maybe Ooh. made it too salty I don't know I don't think so okay. it's so refreshing you know, like, when you kind of have a cold something, and you have that weird t taste in your mouth, something fruity sounds so yeah. good. I like to drink these a lot, and usually I make, like, a big glass of this with ice, and it's so good. So, our episode this week is going to be just kind of a lot of life updates and what's been going on. Yeah, this is kind of what's been brewing, yeah. but it feels like we have so much to catch up on. Like, her and I have done a lot of things, and we haven't even caught up, so... This is kind of going to be a catch-up episode. We have something kind of fun towards the end to celebrate Valentine's Day. Maybe it's in the title. I'm not sure what we're titling yeah. this. We're yeah. really winging it because I literally just got back from vacation yesterday. Yeah. Which I'll get into later. But yeah. I'll just go ahead and start. I feel like I don't have as many exciting things to talk about. Have I, I've seen you since Florida. Barely. I just like haven't heard about your Florida trip yeah. at all. So Florida was fun. Um, it was annoying. So we got to the airport. I think our flight was supposed to leave at one. 1 30 or 12 30 it got delayed a little bit which was fine then we got to the airport and it got delayed a lot it was like oh it got canceled so oh my goodness get delayed it just got canceled so why because of weather weather somewhere the weather wasn't that bad here so then johnny and riley we went with johnny and riley they were like getting food and then which that's like some of our good couple friends yeah you and oliver are really close with them yeah it's it, it's so fun traveling with them other couples it's, yeah yeah it's just so fun going with friends especially when you guys are both married and yeah we're all really good friends um they were getting food when we heard this and thankfully I got in line right away and Oliver's like why don't you just like why don't we just wait till they get back to see what to do I'm like no I am staying in line because <laughs> if you have ever like had anything like a delayed flight or canceled flight that line adds up so quick yeah it's everybody so long so thankfully I was like I was not like the first person but I was like up there and you know people are always mad I always feel bad for the flight attendants because everyone's like chewing them out um what airline did you guys go with frontier <laughs> oh my word okay and there, there could have been some sketchy reasons like why they canceled it there were some conspiracies going around that, um, <laughs> I'm sure the flight because there was a flight later that evening for 9 30 which is what we got on that apparently that wasn't booked enough like there it wasn't full so they just canceled our flight so then they would just oh. have to take one flight there Hmm. Who knows? Doesn't really matter. It was really annoying. Yeah. Um, that literally happened to us. I'll just say really quick. Oh, yeah. I feel I like I that. had it in the vlog, a vlog of mine. We were coming back from Colorado. We woke up so early in the morning to go. It was like a 5 a.m. flight, so we had to wake up at like 3 a.m. Yeah. We literally were at the wrong gate because our boarding pass didn't show the right gate. It changed to. Oh, And yeah. I looked and I was like, shoot. I looked up. I was like, shoot, this is not right. And I was like, we're literally about to board. And I like looked down and it was the one clear across the airport. So I'm like, get up. We have to <laughs> run. We have to get booking. And I was like kind of starting to like cry. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got there and it was like not to Cincinnati, Ohio. And I was like, shoot. I was looking at the wrong boarding pass. It was the one from uh, Cincinnati to Denver, not Denver yeah. to Cincinnati. 
And then I looked, and I'm like, oh, shoot. The one that we were supposed to go was literally the gate right beside the one we were already at. And I was like, I'm sure we won't make it. I, like, ran. I was like, <sighs> yeah. Like, I probably looked like I was having, like, a panic attack because I was, like, crying. Yeah. And then, like, we got there, and it was, like, closed. And I, like, just, like, crumpled to the ground, and I, like, started sobbing. Probably people were like, I, that's horrible because you were so close. Like, yes. if you would have just, like, paid a little bit. I just, like, panicked. I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. I bet, like. And you know, like, in those moments, like, you're just sobbing, but you, like, almost don't even care what people think. Oh, yeah. You're so, I was, like, spiraling. Like, Keegan was, like, <laughs> it was, like, at that point, when you wake up early, I was, like, I just want to get home. So. I know. And then we had to, like, stand in line. We were yep. also with Frontier. Yeah. They're cheap. Yeah. You know? They're cheap. Yeah. That's, that's what I'll I will always them. go with the cheapest airline, but, yeah. It's not always the best, but nope. they're cheap. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, standing in line, that, it's just so stressful. Yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> So we had a lot of time to burn. So we were like, let's just go to the movie theater because it wasn't really worth driving all the way back home because we were flying out of, I can't even remember if it was Cincinnati or Columbus. I think it was Cincinnati. Yeah. So it wasn't wasn't really worth driving all the way back home. So we went to the movie theater and we watched Boys on the Boat. And I've heard of that. Yes. I highly recommend that movie to you guys if you want. um, It's just super interesting. I would say it's very moderately clean. It's I have that book on my like to read. Somebody, yeah, I want to read the book. Yeah, somebody recommended it to me yeah. and said it was super yeah. good. It was just, I was very impressed with the movie for, I don't know, sometimes I feel like a lot of the movies that they put out this day and age can have a lot of, I don't know how to say Adult it. content. A lot of adult content. They're always, I don't know, not always inappropriate or they just put things in that I'm not super impressed with, but I was very impressed with this movie. Um, it was one that was very like well worth the money, well worth the watch. So we did that, and then we went, <laughs> we wanted to go to, a f- I forgot about this, we wanted to go to a fun coffee shop then, uh-huh. Riley and I, because we love coffee, and so we were like, look, we go to a coffee shop next, Oliver's doing all the driving at this point, so then we like find one, well then it's like in downtown Cincinnati, so oh we're like, goodness. get there, and you know how horrible it is in downtown yeah. Cincinnati, and I was like, like you have to pay to park everywhere, and I was just, I was just telling Oliver, I'm like, you don't have to, if we, like we don't have to park, yeah. we can just totally find somewhere else, like, totally go somewhere else. So we sk- we were like all the way in downtown Cincinnati, skipped that. We found did we find another coffee shop. I don't think I was paying very close attention. It was like almost like routing us back <laughs> to back to downtown Cincinnati. Yeah, like I was like, let's get out of here. Let's get out of downtown. And then I think it was oh, I was looking for like a restaurant then, because then uh-huh. like we were all hungry. Like let's just get food. And I think I was, like, taking us back into downtown <laughs> Cincinnati. It's so hard to tell, though. Like, they I gave know. I maps. couldn't tell. <laughs> I, was, I think Oliver really wanted to go to Five Guys. <laughs> so I was trying to find one. And then we were, like, nope. And then we found, like, an area that wasn't downtown. Like, I think it was on our way there. Like, let's just go to – we found a Penn Station. So we – Eight Penn Station, then we still had so much time to burn. I think at that point, our flight had already got delayed from 9.30 to 10.30 then. Oh, my goodness. We were supposed to land in Florida at, like, 3.30, and we were staying at my grandparents' house, which was, like, an hour from the airport. So we were supposed to have, like, a lot of our evening at home yeah. or at their house. And, yeah, that was really annoying. We didn't get there until super late. So what did we end up doing? We ended up going to Ross, which... <laughs> <laughs> like a raw store yeah yeah kind of walked around there i'm not sure if anyone got anything and then we just ended up going back to the airport it was a very long day and you, so you had to like go through security and then you just like yeah had to go through security we like again. saw a lot of the same people that were on the same flight as us because <sighs> a lot of people were rebooked to that flight and then i don't think it got delayed anymore past that i think we landed at maybe thankfully the flight wasn't very long i think we landed at like midnight and then mom and dad were just there like the week before us. So they left their car in the garage. So thankfully we didn't have to go get a rental car or an Uber. Yeah. So we got the car. I think we were back at grandpa's house at like 2 o'clock. And 2 a.m. Yeah. Ugh. So, I mean, it was a really chill trip. We Yeah. It, it was like, it felt like it took a long time to get anywhere. Because going through the city in Florida, like. It is crazy. Yeah. It's stressful. Like just to get anywhere. If you go through Tampa, I mean, it was just like. I don't know. We're from like rural Ohio. Yeah. We not, probably no. some of the listeners are like, okay, Florida is like not near as bad yeah. as some places. I know. It's just like somewhere. Yeah. It, it took a long time to get places. So we felt like most of the trip, especially because of the whole delay we spent in the car. But yeah. it, it's fun. It was so fun. We were with friends. So we just laughed yeah. about it. And Make we had memories. a lot of fun. Yep. I feel like situations like that, like 
I had so much more fun with friends. You think if it was just oh, you and Oliver? If it was me and Oliver, would be like, I would just be like, it's because it's just like, what a waste of our money. We're not even getting there. But it's like, it's fun because we're there with friends. We're just like hanging out. We're like we kind laugh of about it. on a trip anyway because I don't know. We're not at home, even if we're stuck in the car, just roaming through Cincinnati trying to find things to do. I feel like there was something funny I was going to say about Pepper. So when Keegan and Kinsley were gone on the cruise, we house sat Pepper. Which are our little cat, yes, if you don't know. Kitten. She did pretty good. She does get naughty. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she's so sweet. She is very sweet. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I was going to tell you earlier. Because she was, it was just the other day I was ironing, mm-hmm. going to iron something. First of all, she was trying to play with the ironing cord. That freaks really, me yes, out. Yes. I was like, absolutely not. Like, you just have to go out. She's an indoor cat. So she's mostly inside. I let her out some if we were home just for a little bit. But I had realized, so last Sunday, I had ironed some of Oliver's pants <laughs> before church on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then that Friday, so like five days later, I went to like do some more ironing and the iron was still plugged in. Oh, my word. And I was like, I know, I'm like... I, I don't iron very much, so I'm like, I don't think I used it at all between ends. So it's just been sitting here on for five days. It's a good thing Pepper never ke- went in and played with it. I know. And I'm also just like, could that start a fire? Probably. I don't think ours Keegan does. Keegan just asked if, like, irons turn on af- off after a while. Ours does, but it might be the kind of iron. No, I don't think because I went to go and iron and it was hot and I hadn't plugged it in yet. So, yeah, I know. I have done, I it was a couple months ago. I had left a burner, like I'd made eggs in the morning and then turned it off and like went to work and then came back and like the burner had been left on the whole time with the pan still on it. That I'm, that's always my worst fear. Like I'll go home and make like a panini or like yeah. a grilled sandwich. Yeah. I'm always like on my way home, like, did I turn it <laughs> off? Did I turn it off? I, cause it could, if there's like a lot of oil in it, it could really start a fire. I know. Just start smoking. If there's like, I don't know what could happen. I, yeah, I think I've done that with the oven before too. Like left on. I feel like I <coughs> sometimes get so bad at like turning the oven on once I pull something out of it. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. We hosted the Super Bowl party last night, which was fun. I'm sure. I don't know if you guys are Super Bowl fan, Super Bowl fans, football fans or not. I think most people like to watch Who the Super Bowl. Who did you Bowl. go for? Um, I didn't really care a lot. I kind of wanted the 40, 49ers to win just because the Chiefs have already got to win so much. Yeah. But I also kind of like Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, it'd be kind of fun if the Chiefs won. But I was definitely, I was like, I more thought the 49ers, like it would be neat for that team if yeah. they won. I was rooting for the Chiefs because of Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. We're sucked in like all the other girls. Guilty. <laughs> but once they won, I was kind of like, eh, they didn't deserve. Or like, I was kind of like, A, I yeah. was just kind of like grossed out by Travis Kelsey, which is a whole other rabbit trail. Yeah. I'm sure you guys know what we're talking about if you uh Like between him, between him shoving his coach, getting mad, and then his, um, Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> I was just grossed out. <laughs> I guess he was just excited. I know. I know. But, you know. It, the game wasn't that good until, like, basically the last quarter. It was a very low-scoring game. Pretty yeah. boring. We didn't watch, like, any of it until, yeah. like, we came to pick up Pepper at your house. Yeah. And so we got, like, the last, literally the last play. Yeah. But I was checking the... best the, part. Yeah. I was checking the scores, and I was like, this seems like it's kind of a lame yeah. game. Yeah. But then towards the end, it was, like, super close. Yeah. I know. So I was glad it was super close, but it was a really bummer, because I, I think the 49ers... I wish they would have won. Um, yeah. They looked s- like, like when all the confetti was falling down and the players were just like sitting there who didn't win. They looked so depressed and sad. And I just, I, I don't know. Every time I always feel bad for the other team. I don't think I would have felt, maybe I probably would have felt bad for the Chiefs too. Cause you just naturally do feel bad for the other yeah. team, but they've already won. Like, is this their third Keegan? You in the know. last like five years or something. They've won two in a row. Did they play last year and won? Yeah, so it's kind of like give someone else, <laughs> give someone else a turn. But I, I get it. If you're good, I mean, the best team deserves to win. So yeah. you play hard to get there. And I was kind of like, and not to get into pop culture, but I was like, of course, like when Taylor Swift starts dating Travis Kelsey, that's like when they when they <laughs> win. I'm like, when does that ever happen? I'm like, it feels like I know she's dating someone on like the most successful team, and I know like well, and like the most yeah. successful time of his life. Anyways, we are not a pop culture podcast here but if um, you would like us to talk more about it <laughs> let us know <laughs> no. i don't really have much more there's i did finally order all my wedding pictures i don't know if you guys know this or not but if you get the shutterfly app you get a free unlimited amount of like eight or what, what's the standard size of pictures six by four four by okay. six 
you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Four by six. Yeah, like the normal rectangle. Yeah, <laughs> and four by four. So you can they, you can get them all for free. You have to pay for shipping. Anyway, so I ordered tons of wedding pictures. I should do that. Yeah, and I just got, I think Jen Peterson put it on her story about. That's your photographer. Yeah, she's who did my wedding pictures. She um does her photo albums. Like She just gets the, well, probably all the ones that we grew up with, like the plastic sleeves, you know, that you mm-hmm. stick pictures in. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times when I think about scrapbooking, I want to do like a really fun, like, brown paper book and like glue my pictures on put stickers write little yeah. notes which is fun I've done that once but it's a lot of time and it's really hard to actually ever get to so and I'm like if I order these pictures I'll have them and I ordered a wedding album so I just like stick them in and it's so easy and I'll actually get it done is it a really like nice like book that's my thing it's like sometimes they're kind of like chintzy. I know it, it is nice it's like a uh, linen color okay it's a cream linen color and it has like is it called embossed in it kind of like stamped in it it says okay. our wedding like in gold oh, it has like okay. a gold flower so where did you order it amazon okay the only thing i don't like about it and i couldn't find it found one and returned already and then i got this one i don't like how big it is it's pretty big but the thing is i have wedding pictures that go up and down and sideways if mm-hmm. you know what i'm talking about and most yeah. of the smaller albums either all the sleeves go horizontal or all the sleeves go vertical yeah and like normally maybe that wouldn't bother me but for my wedding i wanted a, a page that had like vertical slots and horizontal yeah. slots in it, so that like all the pictures are facing the right way so all the albums that have that are like a little bit bigger so yeah. which is like it's probably the standard size it's just like i like smaller books because they'll fit like on a bookshelf but yeah this is I, I should look into that because it's literally been two and a half years and i still haven't yeah. done it and i feel like i'm just <sighs> never going like i just yeah. need to do or else it's literally never gonna happen that'd and be really sad yeah to not have one. there's something so different about like when I got the pictures in the mail like I just looked at them all on my phone because I was ordering them it is like so much more fun to see the picture like printed out I think it's even probably more fun than like a Shutterfly album yeah I don't know something about that picture just like printed out it feels like you just like I don't know how to explain it it's just so much more fun to have that it's just like yes versus just looking at them on your phone and like you can just kind of like display it somewhere in your living room or office or something, people can look through it. It's just, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't really think I have any more life updates. That was just kind of fun things that I've yeah. been working on That's or that has happened in the last. We only recorded probably. It was probably three weeks ago or a month. I guess it, it feels like it was just last week. I know. It's but going yes, by so fast. I know it has. I'm like, how, yeah. It would probably be different if we were like a weekly podcast. Yeah. Maybe someday, you know. If we're making money, like making and money, don't we don't really have our like um we don't have work as much I guess in our other jobs yeah. and have a lot more time to do this kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I am very excited to hear all about the cruise. Maybe you have some other life updates, but I really haven't even talked to you since you've got back about anything cruise related. So I was like trying to think of like what all I've been up to. Yeah, and literally I couldn't think of anything besides the cruise. Yeah, I think that some things did happen, but. Yeah, I, don't know, I guess this is just, That's like just the like big the thing. big thing in your mind. That yeah, you're looking we literally to. just got back, like I said, last night. So this was like not a normal cruise. It was like on a normal cruise boat, but it was a Christian cruise by the ministry Family Life. And it's called Love Like You Mean It. You might have heard of it. And it's a marriage cruise. So it's just married couples. There's no like kids on it besides like there's like speakers and like performers like there's concerts and stuff and sometimes they bring their family yeah. so it was like kind of weird like seeing a kid here and there yeah. but it was like really cool that it was all married couples yeah. and it's kind of like a marriage retreat on a boat when we were on it I was like I don't know if I would really like a regular cruise just things about it yeah but the atmosphere I remember my parents saying that about it because they had been on it before and we actually yeah. went my parents were there a couple aunts and uncles yeah Keegan's brother and his wife were also yeah. on there so we had some people we knew yeah yeah my parents were like the atmosphere is so good and it was like every night we had worship and we had like a session all about marriage there's like breakouts that you can go to like little workshops yeah. or whatever you can go to during the day and all of the concerts and performers are Christians so like even a Christian comedian Christian magician yeah and like they kind of brought in like the gospel or even like their testimony I remember yeah. the magician kind of bringing his testimony into the magic show and so it was just really cool that all around it was like Christ centered yeah. so this cruise was going to the Cayman Islands Jamaica and the Bahamas okay I didn't know where all you went so okay. yeah so no pepper pepper is trying to get our mocktail she wants the adrenal cocktail (laughs) 
her adrenal glands are stressed. <laughs> Anyways, so I was a little bit nervous about it because, for one, this was a little bit of a splurge. I yeah. mean, cruises and things, they're just a little expensive. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just, like, going somewhere in the States and getting an Airbnb mm-hmm. or a hotel. Like, this was a little bit more of an expensive vacation, at least for us. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I really hope this is worth it. And another thing is I knew it was going to be crowded. And so I was a little bit nervous because Keegan does not like big crowds of people. (laughs) Oliver does not either. (laughs) Yeah. Even like going to Trader Joe's, he gets like a little overstimulated. Oh, yeah. Especially at Trader Joe's. That place is always packed. I know. And everybody's just, it is a little, a little overwhelming. So like the first day, Keegan was like, this is a little much. He's like, I don't, I don't know if I would do this again, but this is a fun experience. And I was like. Okay, and I was like, I really hope we didn't just, like, waste our money. Yeah. Like, and we don't have a good time. Yeah. Like, I was imagining that we'd have a good time, but. Yeah. So, the next day, it was super rocky, and I expected to get, maybe get sick, but I didn't think Keegan would. Mm-hmm. It was actually the other way around. Keegan got super sick. Like, we tried to go to a breakout session, one of the workshops, and, like, five minutes in, like, Keegan was just, like, sweating. He was so nauseous. So, we had to, like, go and just basically sleep in the room for half the day. And Keegan's like, this is probably the first and last time we will ever be on a cruise. That's such a bummer. It's giving me, like, um, like how, kind of how your honeymoon was at first. Yeah. You know, like, you're like, oh, my word, did we waste all our money because like, Keegan was uncomfortable? <laughs> I know. And so mom, like, almost half the ship was sick in bed, yeah. literally. And the pools were closed up because, like, I guess they could slosh around a yeah. bunch. So there wasn't even anything to do. Mom was sick. And Keegan was sick and me and dad, like I felt a little funny, but I felt fine. So me and dad just like went and got lunch together. And I was like, is this really how it's going to be? Yeah. I was like, surely it'll get better. Yeah. Anyways, the next day we were going to the Cayman Islands. I was like, okay, we're going to get off on land. And they're like, we heard over the speakers, there was a big storm in Cayman Islands. So that stop got canceled. So it's going to be another day at sea. (sighs) Which that was like one of the places I was looking forward to because I had never been there before. Yeah. But I was like, whatever, oh well. The next day, the day we were supposed to go, ended up being really fun. The pools were opened up. They had like a water slide. We did okay. that. Okay, on the boat. So yeah. you could at least enjoy all that. And the next day, we were supposed to go to Jamaica. Well, there's a storm that hit Jamaica, so we're going to have to cancel that. But we found a port in Montego Bay, which is actually where Keegan and I went for our honeymoon. Yeah. And I was like, well, <clears throat> I was kind of looking forward to exploring a new part of Jamaica. Yeah. But at that point, I was like, I don't even care. Like, yeah. just like give me like land. I want to go to the <laughs> beach. Like, <laughs> I don't get off care. the boat. <laughs> I liked Montego Bay. I was yeah. just like, oh, a new part. Anyways, the next day, they're like, well, there's kind of a storm. It's kind of dirty. So all the beaches are closed. So, so this is the day. So he says the next day we're going to Montego Bay. And yeah. then th- that day comes. And then yeah. he's saying all the, the beaches, beaches are, are closed. Dirty, closed. Yeah. yeah. So we were able to go to the beach and we paid like way too much money to do this little tour thing. So we went around. We went to all these little like touristy shops <laughs> and they were like suck you in. Yeah. <laughs> and they were very much like trying to sell us weed and stuff. Oh, I yeah. had heard that about Jamaica. I didn't experience that on our honeymoon. We had that on our honeymoon. But there's like this guy who's like, hey, hey got the smokes <laughs> <laughs> and I was like no thank you oh, that's hilarious but I they like the they literally they are like so into their like weed yeah and it was like all over the place but it was like kind of funny and fun we were just kind of joking around yeah and we ended up going to like a Jamaican restaurant so I did get like street food okay. and I was kind of looking forward to that like hoping yeah. to experience some like culture so we did get to experience that in Jamaica. The rest of the trip was really fun. And the Bahamas Day, that was the one I was looking forward to the least because it's like an island that's owned by the cruise. So yeah. I was like, I know it's not going to have any culture. It's just yes. going to be kind of like. Yeah. It ended up being my favorite day that we had like really? the whole cruise. The part of it was like, I just wanted to go to the beach. I was yeah. like, am I going to go on a Caribbean cruise and not even get to go to I the know, beach? I know, exactly. And it was so beautiful and we got to snorkel we saw some cool stuff i saw like a stingray and okay some different fish yeah and i haven't like snorkeled a lot in yeah. my life and it was just really fun we got to hang out with keegan's brother and his wife and it was like literally yeah. such a fun day yeah at the end of it i was wait. okay so you only had two stops then yeah we only ended up having two stops and you're supposed to have three yeah okay which the days at sea were actually like really fun like once yeah. we got used to it, we actually really got used to the people and I mean, it is, it is crowded, but you 
you actually do get used yeah. to it. And there's, it's very big, so that it like is very spread out. Like yeah. there's places to go. Probably the biggest crowded place is like the cafeteria where yeah. you get all your food and I stuff. I feel like it would just help just not having kids on there. I feel yeah. like when it's like if there was like whole families, like kids running around, it would be a lot more overwhelming versus like it's just married couples. Yeah. And, and another people. thing yeah. is like because it was a Christian cruise, you weren't seeing people like, I feel like if you went on a, a regular cruise, people would just be like getting hammered. Yes. Like, and that just gets annoying. Yeah. Honestly. So I was like really thankful about that. I mean, they had drinks and stuff and you can get them, yeah. but it wasn't. You weren't seeing so much, like, yes. abusing the alcohol. <laughs> yes. At the end of it, I asked Keegan, because we both loved our honeymoon. We went to, like, an all-inclusive yes. resort, and it was just fun. I do really like, like, relaxing and, like, not having to make any food. You just go up, and you're like, what do we yes. want to get today? There's all these restaurants. And I was like, how do you, like, compare this to our honeymoon? Because honeymoon would be, like, our top vacation. Oh, yeah. We both agreed this was better than the honeymoon. Okay. Wow. That's pretty big. Yes. It was so fun. And I think it was honestly like the sessions, the concerts we went to, it was literally the best. I feel like a trip, um, how, you guys have been married like two and a half years. I feel like a trip two and a half years into marriage is just like, I don't know. I feel like that's just for a lot of people going to just going to be a lot more fun. I don't, it's just like you, I don't know if that we know each other so well, know each other. It's like, I don't know. It's, and it was really fun. Like. We had lots to do because there were, like, the sessions and stuff. Yeah, and you have all those wholesome sessions to do, and we felt like we were feeding ourselves spiritually. And I, something that, like, we went on to kind of connect together. It was a marriage cruise, and we really did that. Like, it was really good for our marriage. And I feel like we do come from a place of, like, being newlyweds. Like, life is good. We yeah. haven't hit a lot of rough spots. I know for some people, the first couple of years of their marriage is really rough. That ha- it's not been perfect. We have had some rough spots, but like, I feel like we have a really good marriage. We get along. Yeah. But I feel like there's still something for us. There was something for struggling marriages yeah. and, you know, wherever you're at in yeah. life. And we still got like lots of great advice. Yeah. One thing that I didn't, I kind of went in to connect with Keegan and I feel like I really like came out connecting with the Lord, like my true bridegroom yeah like I <clears throat> on the first night so we had like really really good worship and I'm just gonna get a little bit vulnerable right here about like kind of like where I was at yeah in that point the past couple of months I have been growing a lot in my relationship with the Lord but I kind of opened up with Keegan about how I've been really sh- had been really struggling to understand the goodness of God yeah which is something I haven't really struggled with a lot And, like, it was a really good worship service, but I just almost felt like I wasn't ready to, like, fully, like, worship. Yeah. Something that I was having a lot of, like, anxiety about is, like, even just thanking God for what he's given me because I know that everything he has given me, he could just take away. Oh, yeah. So, it was kind of, I think my biggest fear and anxiety that I was struggling with is, like, what if God took Keegan away from me? It's like the worst thought. <laughs> yeah. And it was like kind of a little bit dark to like yeah. think and like go down that rabbit yeah. hole. And it was like, could I still like love God? Could I still see his goodness even yeah. in that? And I had a really good conversation with Keegan. And being on this cruise, for one, I didn't have any internet. I was able to really just unplug yeah. from the world and reconnect with the Lord. Reconnect yeah. with Keegan and reconnect with the Lord. Without all those distractions. Yeah. We had, is it Evel? Evelation music there is an evelation music I think. is that how you say it oh oh yeah worship initiative <laughs> almost yeah the worship was like really good and yeah. one of the songs that they sang that has always like kind of spoke to me is christ be magnified in the um bridge it was like i won't be formed by feelings i'll hold yeah. fast to what is true because Uh, This is something I have to constantly remind myself of is my feelings cannot dictate my view of God. Because if I choose to believe God and have faith, I have to believe that everything he says is true and he is good. Yeah. And my emotions and feelings, especially as a woman, they're going to (laughs) go up and down, whether it's hormones or things going on in my life. Even my past experiences cannot define the truth of God. And like... 
if the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. I have to be willing to surrender Keegan. I have to be willing to surrender all the things that God has given me. And so this was like kind of a big time of like surrender and just like worshiping God. He's been so good to me and he will always be good to me. But I don't know if my life will always be so easy and good um, as like I feel like I'm in a good place in life right now. One thing I just like came to was thanking God for what he's given me and being good steward of like thank you God for giving me two and a half years with Keegan like I'm thankful for the time that I got thank you God for this house like yeah (laughs) it's like he's already died but I have to almost be like nothing in this world is mine I'm just a steward of it and that was just something that I was like learning so I kind of didn't expect to I expected to connect with Keegan and I did, but I just feel like I really connected with the Lord and yeah, that's really neat. Um, it was just, it was really good. Yeah. If you're ever interested, I would really recommend it. It's really good. Really fun. Really cool for your marriage. I enjoyed it more than I expected to. And it had a rocky beginning, but it really redeemed (laughs) itself. (laughs) Yeah. I thought I would share just a few notes that I took, like some of the things, the highlights and things that stood out to me. One is that, We're not going to drift towards oneness naturally, whether it's in our marriage or in our relationship with Mm -hmm. the Lord. The currents of life are naturally going to pull us apart. Mm -hmm. We need to be on alert. And one thing that they kind of used as like a little play on words is to not go on cruise control. Like (laughs) always be pressing forward, always be alert and see when the currents of this earth are pulling you apart. That's a good point. I feel like it's very, I like the point about you have to be very intentional about oneness because I feel like it's just not something that comes naturally. Maybe some people it comes very naturally too, but it's just like you have to be so intentional about that part. And like Satan is naturally going to, he's not going to root for marriages. No. Or your relationship with God. No. Any any of that. Um, So yeah, I really like that point. Another one, we had a session all about like humor it was like actually really fun and funny but like delighting in each other and being playful and it's like super important to have a sense of humor together and joke around because life is going to be hard and that like really draws you together uh, that is okay not to interrupt you that is so true i think uh-huh. all of them are laughing we both like to be sarcastic sorry sarcastic we're not like easily offended at making jokes at each other or anything and yeah i feel like when we are at the time like that is like when it's like some of the most like fun times where I feel like the closest to him like when mm-hmm. we're just laughing about some dumb joke that we've made like I, know. I don't know why like that I feel like that just like like if you haven't had that in a while and then you do have that humor again it just I don't know almost like it connects you, you it does connect you that is like such a big thing uh-huh. I feel like and it's something like you don't always hear a lot but it's really important just yeah. to be friends yeah. and remember why you fell in love. Yeah. And I think like each couple kind of has their own like little oh, yeah. sense of humor. They're all yeah. kind of like, if you heard us talking, you'd be like, you guys are so yeah. weird. But like everybody yeah. has yeah. that. And one last thing is Keegan and I have really been thinking about like what, how are we using our, I'm getting so stuffed up. How are we using our marriage to serve others and to serve the Lord? Um, one little play on words was make a dent where you're sent which is kind of like a fun way of like the yeah. great commission yeah and you're going you know make disciples and make a difference where you're at yeah yeah so keegan and i kind of sat down and like made a list of different ways that we feel like that we could serve other people yeah in our marriage and a little bit like individually if we yeah. have like different things so i think that's like i would encourage you know other people to kind of do that with your spouse just think about again and it's helpful to write them down not just discuss them because it's almost like a checklist like we want to go back and be like have we done that yeah and honestly these are really simple I don't like they're not like crazy like unattainable (laughs) ones yes even just things that we've like been meaning to do like we need to like reach out to this person we need to call this person who's not doing super well some different things like that so that was all that I had I just had a really good time and if you're ever thinking of doing something like that I know they also have like we can to remember like weekends where you just like go they have like a, a different like hotels and stuff and I think they do it for like dating and engaged couples as well okay, so that would be interesting yeah. so it's something to check out it's family life 
they have a really neat ministry. Okay, so we posted on Instagram today. Kind of last minute. Yeah. Kind of um, came up a last so minute So I'm idea. not sure. I haven't even looked. I don't even know. I literally was like, I don't even know if anybody responded, but you apparently looked. And yeah. Oops. Some people <laughs> did respond. I was kind of like, this was really last minute. Yeah. But do you have them the same order as me? Probably. So we just kind of take turns. Some um, of them are too, like. Two parts. Like two parted. Yeah. Um, I Since we're like. I know Valentine's will be over by the time this is posted, but we're kind of in the month of, like, love yeah. and February. And I knew, like, I just came off of a marriage cruise, so I knew I would be sharing a little bit yeah. about marriage. And so I thought that this could kind of it just be interesting to hear yeah. other people's wisdom, people who have more life yeah. experience or that have gotten really good advice. So so we asked, what's the best marriage advice you would give or have received? Um, so we'll just, we've got a few answers here. Um, I guess we'll just take turns reading them. I'll read the first one here. Your partner is ill-willed towards you. I wonder if this is going to read your partner is ill <laughs> Maybe she meant if your partner is ill-willed. I know. Okay, I think what she meant to say is your partner isn't ill-willed towards you. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <they're not> <laughs> <laughs> Those one little words can really switch something up. Yeah. I think it's supposed to say your partner isn't ill-willed towards you. They're not trying to make you mad. Your husband can't read your mind. Use your words. Uh, that's pretty good. That is, I think that's a thing as, I mean, us as women and wives struggle with way more than guys it's just like you just expect your husband to be able to read your mind and Mm -hmm. like and then you can just start to build resentment towards him if they don't read like your mind on something it's like why why don't i just use my words to communicate it and the whole issue would be resolved yeah (laughs) i know happy marriages begin when we marry the one we love it blossoms when we love the one we married that's really sweet i like the way that's worded and you have like it's going to feel naturally to have those feelings of love in the beginning when you're marrying them. And something Kiki and I talk about, love is not a feeling, it's an action. Yeah. And so once <clears throat> you're married, you have to choose and you have to, con- even when you don't like them or they're kind of frustrating you, like your love is really going to blossom when you choose to love them. Yeah. There's a big difference when you're dating versus married. I, I think... It's just like you're kind of a little bit in the infatuation yes, stage. Yeah, when, when you you're get married, married, you have to be a lot more intentional. I mean, you're with each other all the time. You're building your lives together um, for the rest of your lives, and you have to be very intentional about showing that love. And yeah, don't stop dating when you get married and be each other's best friends. That's definitely one I've heard before, and it's I think it's a really good one to remember. I think sometimes it's easy like you're so excited to get married, so excited to get married. You get married, and then like you just feel like you're just in a mundane routine all of a sudden like now we're married like it was really fun at first and it's like you gotta like still date each other and still like make intentional Mm -hmm. time pursue each other pursue each other make intentional time to like um even at your own house it can be kind of hard to be intentional like sometimes it's good just to like go out for a date night Mm -hmm. or go to a park go somewhere else because sometimes it's just so easy to get stuck into the mundane routine of life and you're just at your house I feel that sometimes yeah and I know it's probably gonna be different once we have kids it's like very easy to just oh yeah <laughs> like every night not every night's a date night but like yeah you're always it's just, just you too but yeah I think sometimes it can be easy just to feel like you're stuck in a routine and mm-hmm. it's really good so it's like it's good just to switch things up maybe yeah. just go somewhere or maybe just like you can cook like a fancy dinner at home and just like yeah. maybe just hold off all other plans or projects around the house and just be very intentional about yeah. just spending time together communicate that's key <laughs> we had a, is key. we had a session all about communication yeah that's a big one it was really good I don't even know how to like communicate what we learned <laughs> but Keegan and I know um it was just like a lot of different tips it was actually like this actor couple and they were kind of giving the like connection between like doing improv connecting that to like communicating because when you're doing improv you know what improv is right yeah it's like they say something and you just kind of have to roll with it yeah I feel like that's not really making a lot of sense I know what you're saying but it's like you when you're doing improv you can't say things that are gonna like they did for an example like somebody's like how old are you and you're like I'm 68 and you're like oh I thought you were 67 and then it kind of like almost like yeah you don't really have that like chemistry anymore. Like they said, you're drawing majors on the minors. It's kind of like you're communicating with your spouse. Let's say they're like telling a story. Yeah. And you're like, they're like, so we went out on Thursday night. Well, it was Friday night. And you just kind of like put them down a little bit. Cause it's like, 
you majored on the minors, it wasn't really like it yeah, almost I feels th- like you don't really hear them and you that's don't care. A good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it's very easy to fall into that rut sometimes. It's hard, but if you really have Christ as a center, there's so much joy. The joyful parts of marriage by far outweigh the hard parts. That's very true. I know sometimes you, um, it can be kind of. Like, people can kind of rag on marriage. Rag on marriage, or it can kind of sound like when you hear someone say, like, your marriage is going to be so hard, so worth it. And it is true. There is hard parts, and I don't think people are ever meaning that. Like, it's so, like, it's, they're actually saying it's worth it, but sometimes it's, like, almost can scare you. It's like, how hard is it going to be? The hard parts, like, it is hard. And the hard parts in marriage, at least in my experience, are, like, literally what bring you closer together. Mm -hmm. So, like, the hard parts, like, they're hard, but, like, Going through hard things together is literally what brings you closer. And I feel like if you don't have any of that in your life, it's like your life uh, or in your marriage, it's like it just stays more at a shallow level. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. I'm not trying to like. Yeah. And I know every situation, yeah. there's like really, really heavy things. So I feel like we're maybe speaking on a level of like more like maybe little hard things. That. Yeah, I know. No, I get what okay, you mean. I, I think know. everybody gets what you mean. No, I mean. I'm not trying to say like. Be joyous in every hard thing you yeah. go through because it makes, and I know there's all different levels of it and can make some really, really hard things. But um, having Christ in the center, there is so much joy. I mean, having Christ, it is so, like, having Christ in the center of your marriage is such a big thing. Just, like, you always have someone it's to turn to, like, yeah. during different things, and they're there as, like, the, the rock of your marriage. Yeah. Versus you're like, not relying on your spouse yeah. to bring you joy. And it's like you just, you. yeah, and if you're you're struggling, you can literally just turn to God. And, you know, it's good to have other people and other counsel, too. But, um, and then once you put the second part, yeah, the good, the joyful parts of marriage by far outweigh the hard parts. I agree. My friend wrote this. She gave her husband's name. Maybe she doesn't care, but I'll just say, I'll call him Kenny. <laughs> Things Kenny does that annoy me. I miss the wonderful qualities he has. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I read the second part first. <laughs> I read the second part. Reading that on, on its own without the first Without part. any context. I miss. That's my communication. <laughs> the little things are not a big deal. When I spend too much time tearing apart all the little things Kenny does that annoy me, I miss the wonderful qualities he has. That is really true. And that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very easy. Um, maybe some people are more prone to it than others just to like really pick and nag at the little things. And that's really something that I've, I've noticed it in myself. Like I can be that way. And it's something I've tried recently to be intentional about. It's like little things that just, just like little things that aren't that important. It's like just some little things that he does that annoys me. It's like, I do not need to constantly pick him down about yeah. it. Like, it is not... Encouraging. It's encourage- not building him up as no, a man. No, it's not building our marriage at all. It's yeah. not really going to fix literally anything. And um, it does really make you just, like, totally zone in on that one thing. Just, you do miss the good qualities that they have. Yeah. It, it depends on the thing, but she's talking about, like, the little things. The little nitpicky thing. Obviously, there's bigger things that you need to address. Like, don't shove things down. Yeah, no. <laughs> but there's sometimes where it's, like... This person is, like, literally one with you. They're part of you. And so they're going to do the tiniest little thing that you're like, mm, didn't really like that. Versus, like, your friend d- did it and you would kind of just get over it. Cause yeah. Because, like, <laughs> you know, you want to keep that friend. Yeah. But you know your spouse is around and you can just literally <laughs> nitpick everything. Yes, exactly. Okay, this one is my husband always says that the enemy is not each other. And that, I think, is probably one of the most important things to remember in your marriage is that it's very easy to get, like, you know, blame your spouse or get really annoyed at your spouse for like maybe things not going the way that you thought think they should be going and it's literally like, the enemy is using those things in their life and in your life to split your marriage apart mm-hmm. and like it is you are fighting the enemy you're not fighting each other yeah split your marriage apart crush you and your self-confidence yeah. as an individual like those even those little things can add up over time and be really damaging yeah we obviously haven't had like lots of time in marriage but even like going on this cruise I heard that a lot like you have to figure out those things in the beginning instead of just shoving them down because resentment does build. Yeah. And I, I just thought that was really good to remember. Yeah. It's like communicating and from a point of love of just like, this is how I feel. And also knowing that like you might have read the situation wrong yeah. too. Going at it with a spirit of humility. The last one, you and your spouse are both flawed humans. Forgive always. Yeah. yeah. That was kind of like 
back to what we were talking about. Like, understand that they're human and it's easy to rely on them to be, to bring you happiness and to fulfill you. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, Christ is the only one that could ever fulfill us. And, you know, I'm really thankful to have someone to walk alongside me Mm -hmm. in my walk with the Lord, Mm -hmm. in my walk in life. Marriage is a beautiful thing and... I'm feeling very blessed. It was like such a good time to go yeah. like over Valentine's yeah. Day, but I want to take it yeah. beyond Valentine's yeah. Day. Speaking of that, um, what are you doing for Valentine's Day? So we're not actually doing anything on the actual Valentine's Day. I really didn't want to cook at home. I know sometimes that can be a fun date, <laughs> but I, yeah, I was just like, I want to just go out somewhere and not really, really have to worry about cooking at home. But I also know like literally everywhere is going to be insane on Valentine's yeah. Day. Like I know some places you can make reservations, but it's probably way too late for that now. I don't want to, it, it would stress me out to just go somewhere like hoping that they have open spots. Oh and yeah. Have to sit there for an hour. It's hard when you both work. It's like we don't get home till later it's not like we can go out to eat at five o'clock or something and beat the crowd so oliver's brother and his girlfriend who we're really good friends with they also have gift cards to cheesecake factory and we have gift cards for cheesecake factory they're like a it's like a coupon type thing where they expire at the end of the month oh okay but it's like a gift card but like it's like expires it was like a bonus thing okay um, so we're getting ready to leave for puerto rico next week so we kind of have to use them up soon so we're going to go thursday night um we're going to do like a double date for Valentine's Day and go out okay, to eat with fun. them on Thursday night. So we tried Wednesday night. There was no open reservations, yeah. of course. And I was like, I don't have to celebrate right on the day. It'll still be just as fun to go on Thursday. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know what we'll actually do on Wednesday. I mean, we'll obviously probably just stay home. We might, you know, exchange little gifts or something just me and Oliver. But yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Speaking of the busyness, Keegan and I have this like really special restaurant that we like to go. That's a little bit more of a splurge. It's a little bit more expensive. If you live in Ohio, it's in Tip City. It's Cold Water Cafe. So good. The yeah. atmosphere is just like super it's like dim lighting really fancy very classy yeah Yeah. very very nice we went there last year and back to the reservation things I was actually like maybe two weeks ahead and literally the only opening was 8 45 p.m no (laughs) but yes we're actually doing it because bedtime (laughs) really (laughs) well I texted Keek and I was like is it worth it and he was like, let's just do it. We actually did something similar oh, you last are still year. still doing it? Yeah. 845. But I don't know. I was kind of like, well, I don't know. We'll probably have to try to like eat like a little snack at like 5, 4, 5 to like hold yeah, us over. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm not going to be able to wait from lunch to 845 <coughs> to eat. I don't know if it's worth it. We, we went la- late last year because it was a similar situation. It was probably 830. And we still just like had such a good time. So I it was know. still like special. You could even just like get like an appetizer to share and like yeah. drink some dessert or something fun yeah like that. yeah like could. yeah that'll be fun though yeah i'm really excited so i think that's all that we have for yeah. the episode i feel like this ended up being like kind of long yeah I don't know hopefully you guys enjoyed i was like this is going to be probably a shorter episode because we don't have a lot but there's just a lot to discuss yeah. and yeah i hope that you all <laughs> are having <laughs> is she loafing Oh, she's being naughty. Now she's biting our feet. Anyways, they can't see her. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys have a really good February, a good Valentine's Day with your spouse, your significant other, your if girlfriends. you're single. <laughs> have a fun yeah. Galentine's. If you're married, like, I'm really rooting for your marriage. And, yeah, it's just really important to connect and really prioritize it. So, just want to encourage you in that encourage you in your relationship with your spouse and your relationship with the lord so thank you so much for watching or listening however you're taking this in we will have our instagram link down below it'll have like the drink recipe and be sure to yeah follow us over there and you can kind of be more involved in our upcoming episodes and if you're watching this on youtube like and subscribe if you haven't already and we appreciate any feedback any suggestions any comments yeah any suggestions for like future episodes more th- or more things you'd like to hear from us yeah um, yeah we love just, it we love to hear from you guys love yeah i love when we get dms i don't yeah. know it's just like makes my day i'm like oh people listen yes, i know <laughs> <laughs> okay i hope that you all have a great month and we will see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>